Austin Lane, ESPN 690 Radio, with my three observations, my three takeaways from the Jaguars-Titans game. Um, yeah, let's get into it real quick, because it's, it's going to be a fast one, because you guys watched the game, or at least you watched a half of it, so I'm just preaching to the choir here. I'm not going to say anything that you guys don't already know, to tell you the truth. Uh, Jags lose 42-20. to 20. Um, it wasn't even that close of a game. Don't let the 20 fool you. Um, my first observation for my first takeaway, offense didn't show up. I uh, didn't think Nick Foles played really well. Yeah, he got some garbage yards at the end, but Nick Foles did not play well. Uh, didn't step into a lot of throws. Um, penalties once again, we talk about it week in and week out, and here we are again, same thing. Penalties, especially on the offensive line, uh, killed the Jaguars' momentum, especially in the first half, the first opening drives with the holding penalties. And this is something that I've literally said ad nauseum now, and I'm saying it every single week, where these things need to be addressed in practice. And it's nothing physical. It's the fundamentals. It's teaching your linemen how to block, basically. How, how to recover when, when a guy gets the advantage on you. And week in and week out, uh, I watch the Jaguars play, and I watch all offensive linemen hold, and I watch them kill the drops. And unfortunately, the Jaguars' offense is not good enough to come back from those, pen from those penalties. They're, they're drive killers, and the offense is not good enough to respond from that. So the offense in general, especially Nick Foles, you know, Leonard Fournette had two touchdowns. Good to see him get in the end zone. But once again, when we're talking about the second half, the, the Titans were just in kind of, you know, playback mode. Um, just not a good look for the Jaguars' offense in general. My second uh, takeaway, my second observation here we are again, back to back to back, Tommy Namsky, 200-yard rushings against your opponent. Um, you go back to the Texans game, Carlos Hyde, Deshaun Watson, and, and I get that. They're a dynamic offense, and I'm willing to look past that one a little bit because it happened with Christian McCaffrey, and then after that game against the Panthers, the Jaguars came back, they found some pride, and they stopped the run. They stopped Elvin Kamara. They stopped Mixon from uh, Cincinnati. So I guess I just thought that coming into this Titans game, you knew what they were going to do, and you knew it was at stake. When we go back to the Indianapolis game, you knew what Indianapolis was going to do. They had a bunch of wide receivers. No one's really heard it before. T.Y. Hilton was out. Eric Ebron's been struggling. You knew the ball was going to Marlon Mack in their running game. And the Jaguars knew it too. And guess what? They couldn't stop it. So now let's enter the Tennessee Titans game. You know Derrick Henry's chomping at the bit to get going. You know you got to shut down their running game. And I get it. Ryan Tannehill's back. Uh, you know, with this new offense and everything, Corey Davis is like back from injury. So they have wrinkles now. They have play action. But this is the Tennessee Titans. You know it's going to be a physical game. You know they're going to try to own the trenches. And if you're the Jaguars defense, you knew that coming in. And guess what? You knew it, and you couldn't stop it. You, you got outmanned. Um, you lost in the trenches, I think, on both sides of the ball, but especially on defense. You lost in the trenches. And the Titans basically had their way with you. And me personally, I'm sick and tired of watching these games and watching these running backs, whether it's Henry, Carlos Hyde, Williams from the Colts that nobody knew about until they played the Jaguars. I'm sick and tired of watching these running backs have their highlight video moments against the Jaguars. And this was no difference again. Derrick Henry, 70-yard run. And listen, I could sit here and say, uh, Taven Bryan's got to, you, you can't cheat the gap. You got to stay with your gap discipline. Uh, the linebacker's got to fill off you. He's got to see it. Safety's got to come down and help you on that play. But you know what? This is, a, it's an entire collective. I just can't sit here and Nick pick. All right, well, he's bad. He's, you know, like, I mean, there's plays to go around and everybody's at fault there. No one's really playing that good a ball. Like, yeah, Yannick Ngakwe had a strip sack fumble. Leonard Fournette had two touchdowns. But as a collective offense and defense, and even on special teams, guys are not playing well. And when I say that, and this goes into my, uh, my third point, my third takeaway, my third observation, this falls on the coaching. And listen, I got nothing but respect for those coaches um, as far as people. I think they're great people. I had the, the privilege to play under Todd Wash a little bit. I think he's a fantastic guy. But you can't deny what's been going on in the field. And at the end of the day, this is a performance-based business. And it is a cutthroat business. And gauged by what we've seen on the Jaguars' defense, what we've seen on the offense, um, from a whole team collectively, even special teams, there needs to be changes made. And I'm not saying at the end of the season. I'm saying uh, by the time they get back to Jacksonville. 
And listen, I, it's never easy for me to sit here and say I want someone you know, fired from their job because getting fired sucks. I'm sure we've all been there and it's not a good thing. But at the end of the day, like I said, this is a performance-based business. And right now, uh, the Jaguars are not performing. And I think if you're Shad Khan, if you're that front office, you owe it to Jaguars fans who are trying to find something to grasp onto right now. You know, who you're still trying to get to go to the games who have to be frustrated beyond belief, just as much as those guys are frustrated in that locker room. And if you want to send a message to the fans, it's that, you know what, we're trying everything we can and we're willing to make changes if we have to for the betterment of the organization. And right now, I think if you're talking about the betterment of the Jaguars organization, there has to be changes made uh, as far as either the front office or that coaching staff. Because to put that whole team out there again uh, against Tampa Bay coming up with that coaching staff, Listen, if you do the same thing over, over, and over again, it's the definition of insanity. And something needs to change, you know? So take it for what you want better. I think there definitely needs to be for an office changes, coaching changes, whatever it is. Something's got to change by the time the Jaguars uh, take the field at home uh, against Tampa Bay. And that's basically all I got for you guys. They got beaten three phases. Uh, nothing really to, uh, positive to talk about. Pay on, I guess. Been preaching that since day one, but his price is going to keep on going up and up and up now with every strip sack. But pay on, and uh, we'll see you guys Monday for the ESPN 690 radio show. Have a good one.